Okay, I've already done this, thinking I was recording and I wasn't, um, this part. Uh, it, it shuffles beautifully. Uh, at note, uh, very important note. Uh, don't, you're not technically supposed to shuffle, rifle shuffle decks with gilding. I choose to do so anyways, understanding that my gilding will get worn in sooner, uh, especially along the corners. Uh, but I choose to do that because A, I actually like gilding to be worn in. It looks used, it looks loved, uh, it's serving its purpose, which is to be used. And I just know myself and it's going to happen. I am going to rifle shuffle my cards and I accept that. But do as I say and not as I do if you don't want your your um, gilding to get worn. Now some don't. Like my fountain tarot, I have always rifle shuffled and the gilding still looks amazing on it. Um, but you technically you should be overhand shuffling, I suppose. Although you're still, you know, kind of going to still have wearage, but not as much as a rifle shuffle. But, you know, I just, that's my own personal choice with my own personal decks, uh, which usually also means, you know, it's not a deck I'm going to probably be able to trade down the road. Uh, but I accept that uh, and just roll with it. <laughs> and I don't intend to trade this deck anyways, just after the walkthrough and the reading that I've done. This is a deck I will be holding on to, so that doesn't really matter. So, I have already shuffled this a whole bunch, and I am going to do one of the readings in the book. Now, it is actually in a circle. It's a nine card, which I like nine cards. It's in a circle. I'm going to do it in my normal triangle-y kind of frame or diamond-shaped frame. But I do my traditional, my large tarot readings are in a diamond shape. And plus, that's going to let me see how it's going to all look when I do a regular tarot reading with it. So... And then it will fit where everybody can see it. So I will tell you what the positions are and show it to you in one second. This is actually uh, going to be a reading for somebody. It's just sort of a check-in. Okay. I will say, uh, definitely, you know, you're going to see fingerprints on the back. There's no question of that. But to me, it's worth it because it's so gorgeous. Okay, here's the book. The one that we're going to do is this dreamer's spread so it's a nine card and you can see it's kind of set up more as a circle i'm going to be just kind of scrunching it in but there's going to be the same positions i'm also going to make one uh swap a uh it has the uh unconscious at the top and the the conscious at the bottom that doesn't for me make much i just always do conscious and unconscious so i'm just going to do it that way uh, because i am used to that um, those kind of positions. I'm also shifting. I know I'm making this my own people because I can, right? This is what we can do. I also really like the past, present, and future, which is in this deck uh, or in this spread, but it's just been kind of moved around. And I'm just going to put it where I'm used to it because I intend to, I think I'll probably use this spread. So it's okay to take things and make it our own. I'm still leaving the spirit, right, of what she's doing. And so I'm going to put the past where it makes sense to me. I'm leaving the immediate future. Uh, I'm putting the conscious mind at the top and the unconscious mind at the bottom. Uh, I am leaving so that I'm going to move the guide up where the past was. I actually quite like that because you have the expression and the guide up here. You have the past and repression. You have the immediate future and long. Yeah, that works. So I've just tweaked it a little bit. You can do whatever you want, uh, obviously with your own, but I'm tweaking it to what makes sense to me. It still leaves all the positions uh, that she said. I'm just kind of shifting them around a little bit. So I'll tell you how I'm doing them. And you can see uh, how this little lovely spread will go. But again, that was really bad. But this is uh, for an actual person, kind of a check-in. And I quite like uh, some of these positions, so that's why we're going to give it a try with a real person. I, I quite want this. I'm very interested in this deck and in using this deck uh, as a tarot deck and using this deck with clients. I don't think there's be any issue uh, using this. Um, 
and so I want to see it in action. I like to just dive in. Okay, so there's our split. I'm going to pull this back where I can make some room here and have uh, the, the image here. So the very first one in the middle is the dreamer. Uh, and here we have the wisdom card. Uh, so this talks about representing uh, your present vibration. And so that's really beautiful there. And then when we go up to the top, what I'm going to have is the uh, conscious mind as faith. And well, I'll adjust it as once it's all out to, to get it where you can see it the best. Uh, the second, or that's the second card. The third card was... Um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to lay these a little bit differently just so that it, it makes sense to me. So conscious and unconscious right here. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, up here, we have the expression, which is, uh, I love this, it's, it's the um, key to unlocking a potential direction for creative flow. I love that that's a fire card. Uh, and then the guide energy here is the energy of what is going to, uh, let me find it, a potential guide or energy that will strengthen this person and work out any blockages that they might have. Speaking of blockages, we have uh, repression or potential blockages here. And we also have over here, um, well, I'm going to lay the past and the future, and then the long-term future. Now, this is a setup I do my large tarot readings for, and I do past, present, and future, conscious, unconscious, above, below, and then I do a position for each of the four elements. That's how I normally do like a traditional large uh, tarot reading. So I know that was a little uh, mishmashy and I'll probably tweak that a little bit as we go and I probably should have done it just the way that she has it in the book but you know whatever we're, we're playing around here a little bit and it just it just made more sense to me just in terms of getting in and reading it so I love the wisdom I am going to use the guidebook here so you can get some ideas also of how uh, she uh, you know the guidebook and how it might work here although I'm not going to go really in depth because I do know this is going to be quite a long video or two videos I'm sure. So this is about knowledge and understanding and it's really keyly about self-knowledge um, and so this is about you can have great knowledge but it takes understanding to become wise. Um, and what's interesting here is that when we tie into uh, the past for this particular person, we see that there is healing to be done in the past still. And I, that really resonates with me with the sense of wisdom here. That sometimes, because uh, just because I've talked to this person um, about... Um, that sense of not realizing that there was actually still some things to be working through um, and that being a little surprising and there just being some areas that need to perhaps be resolved and dealt with. And so we have that idea of sometimes we can have knowledge and say, okay, I understand this. I understand things that happened in my past. I understand how they impacted me. You have that knowledge, that head knowledge, but that needs to be brought into a state of wisdom, that state of, of true understanding and incorporating that into the Self. And then that seems to be uh, very clearly tied in with um, uh, the healing. So let's just pull the healing card up just because I'm trying to kind of give you a C. Healing, release, pur purification, forgiveness, transformation. It illustrates our third reason for being. However, it covers healing on several levels. Um, and so what's interesting is that in the major arcana, it splits it up from past, present, and future. So this is showing up in a position that is in the past. And so it talks about how that we can find it difficult to let go of the past, especially um, unresolved issues, painful experiences,
experiences can become a source of infection that poisons our ability to be joyful in the present. When the healing card appears in the past, so it really discusses how this might uh, affect us when it's, when it's in that position of something past. It signifies a need to forgive. Um, if another has wronged you and their actions have brought you pain, the time has come to forgive them. Um, of course, it says forgiveness isn't always easy um, and goes into some ways in which we, we've talked about discussed about forgiving, um, that forgiving isn't about forgetting. Uh, forgiving isn't really even about the other person. It's about your own self and ways in which you need to kind of let go of things. Um, and, and the focus needs to be on the here and now and moving forward instead, instead of on the unchangeable past. So it says the healing card in the past position tells you that this is one of the latter times. Leave it be. It's let time and a gentle heart bring you peace. Now that's, of course, the guidebook. But you can just take that idea of healing and just say, okay, we can see that there are some ways in which there is knowledge of the past that hasn't really fully incorporated into, be, into wisdom. Um, um, and what's interesting is that when we move into the future, we have that progression. That's why I really like to see this progression is we have the a seven of, of water, which in this deck is that idea of letting go. But remember, when we just looked at this card, it wasn't just letting go naively or like, oh, I'm just going to let this go flippantly. It's doing the work of healing yourself so that you can reach that state of letting go. And so as a narrative, just with these three cards we have that message of there there being some things in the past that you have knowledge of perhaps you know that they are difficulties for you you know they are your bumps in the road you know that they have had an impact on you but th that there is a missing link there perhaps or another step that needs to be done to create true wisdom around those things and that in the gaining and the work that's doing to bring that wisdom about about the past issues that is going to bring you to a state in which it can truly be let go. Uh, so I think that's really a beautiful uh, sequence of cards uh, to see here. And what's interesting is that when we look above, like sort of that, um, what do we need to consciously focus on and unconsciously, or just that idea to me of as above and so below. I just love those concepts. But in this particular reading, this is about con the conscious. I, I'm flopping my thing around here. So this is the conscious mind. What dwells within your conscious mind and is driving thoughts and feelings, especially about this, and is it in harmony with uh, your the overall energy and is it in harmony with the unconscious mind and so this card has the beautiful faith card and I really like this because this isn't the religion that we would think of organized religion as say in the um, in the Hierophant. We see that in actually another, one of the Swords cards, uh, but it is more a sense of faith. And let's go to look at that one because that's the whole point here is for us to, to really see how are these cards going to play uh, with each other. And so this is number 14. That's actually the very last one, which should be 24. Uh, which I have uh, taken a picture of and I will be sending the picture to Blue Angel so they can send me a new one. So that doesn't bother me. That's something that's fixable. It's going to be fixed. So, but let me just get to 24 so we can see faith. Self belief. I like this because it's faith, but it has that connotation of self belief helps you to overcome. Self belief and faith inspire confidence. Uh, doubt breeds mistakes. Cruel words can do lasting harm. Um, set yourself believable goals in terms of dealing with these past issues. I think that's wonderful too. It says to have faith, the seventh of the influence cards is a beautiful thing. It inspires a feeling of serenity that is unshakable. With faith comes a level of self-confidence that sees you capable of overcoming all that life throws at you or has thrown at you in the past. So I love that, that consciously as he works through these past issues, it needs to be from a place of self-confidence that says, you know, I've already accomplished much in terms, and this is something I know because we've talked about it, 
there's already been a lot of work done on the pot. Again, a lot of knowledge, a lot of work that leads him to a place of being self-confident. Um, and be, But that's that energy that, okay, yes, we're at this place of self-confidence. That's really good. That's going to help you as you look backwards and start to see ways in which some of that needs to shift from knowledge into wisdom. That's kind of the overarching energy that I'm having or that I'm seeing here. I like that that consciously keep that idea of faith in yourself um, as the, you go about this process of moving towards a place in which it can truly be let go of. And then unconscious, it says, let's see what it says here. What dwells within your unconscious mind? Is it in harmony with your present vibration? And here we actually have the king of water, which I love. I'm going to see what she has to say. But the kings for me are about bringing structure and stability, right, to their uh, element, which in this case is water in emotions. Certainly emotions are something that are very much tied in with past things that we need to heal from. Uh, so I quite like that that car. I do think that vibrationally that is a good message to have. Uh, underlying things that this we're just bringing structure here but let's just see uh, what her what she has for her courts because she may have a different perspective calm contemplative insightful fluid balanced protective nurturing the king of water represents a strong man who is calm and protective like a safe harbor in a storm he is a nurturing father who embraces no gender specific role he is willing to be both mother father nurturer protector homemaker and provider uh, that's beautiful, representative of that. And so the king, of he symbolizes an approaching time of peace and calm where you will have time and space to simply be and grow. He also represents a need to let go of emotion-based gender bias and to embrace the awareness that this archetype this archaic paradigm belongs in the past. Uh, a man can be just as sensitive and vulnerable, nurturing and supportive as any woman. A woman can be just as closed off and insensitive as a man. So I love that. Um, this can also represent an actual person um, who embodies the traits of this king, which I actually think is this, this person because it is in his they're unconscious, right? I think this is actually a really beautiful card um, for them to have that supportive that says, and, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I'll say something more personally, but that's really, I think, powerful card to have in this particular position. So that's the, the conscious and the unconscious mind, right? And so... <clears throat> When we look, because, and I like this uh, where I have it positionally also, because we have the past here, and these are a, an area and where some blockages. And I let, I think it's interesting that we have the blocked swords, because if you remember in the walkthrough that I just did, the five of fire was conflict and aggression and the raised fist and that sort of really aggressive behavior that comes before this. And this is a sense of needing to come to terms with it, needing to arbitrate that. Now, it doesn't mean it has to be arbitrated with the person, but internally, because this is what this reading it for me is about, is this person's internal landscape. Internally, internally there needs to be an arbitration of this a past and any aggression and difficulty and and conflict in the past that needs to be resolved needs to be done. Let's pull that card or that that meaning back up because I think I think that's really powerful the way that shows up as a blockage here. Um, it's healing. It is. This is healing. But this is also a card with the keyword of healing. But it is healing through diplomacy and truce and boundaries. I love that idea of boundaries. Um, it that there are. It is a time in which uh, placing boundaries and. Um, be keeping your emotions under control, having your facts state, remaining uh, respectful, your attitude uh, may have a bearing on this outcome it talks about. Now, this is in a position of blockage, so let's just see what it says about potential blockage. When the six of fire re appears reversed or in a position that is a in shadow position, 
Um, it may represent an unwillingness to arbitrate this, an unwill instead of uh, wanting to almost, you know, sometimes how we have negative experiences that are justified, but we find it easier in some ways to hold on to the conflict, hold on to the negative uh, feelings surrounding that um, because it's easier, it's comfortable, it's just sometimes, right? It's justified. But this in this position is saying that it is time to really come to that uh, place in which you can really arbitrate those feelings and those emotions so that we can shift from a knowledge and accepting. I think the knowledge is already there. Even the acceptance of that knowledge is already there. But there is a shift that needs to occur to turn it into true wisdom that allows true release. So I really think that's a powerful combination um, as well to show up touching each other. Um, because just as this reflects how this past is and what we're going to do with it affects the future, um, it also affects the further future, right? A little bit more. This has this position as long term. This is the energy of your environment and self that affects influences your long term future goals and dreams. So I'm going to see this particular card in uh, in light. And what I love is that we have desire. Now, this has some of the elements of the devil card, right? Um, but it has it in such a way um, I'm trying to pull it up here. That that acknowledges that those things aren't necessarily bad. The desire. What is it? It's because what this card, from what I can remember, I'm gonna. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get it back up here. But it has to do with really saying what is it that I want. What is it that this person wants long term? Uh, in terms, in light of this situation, which we have as really dealing with about healing past energies. What is it that you um, as the person coming to this reading wants uh, what is the desire of your heart moving into a long term regarding past influences, right? It's your dreams, it's your ambitions, it's your goals. Uh, can those turn uh, into negative things? Sure they can, uh, which is uh, desire can uh, go uh, into a blockage, but I, that's not how I'm seeing that here because the questions here are, what do you desire most? How much do you want that? How much are you willing to do in order to gain that long-term healing that leads to really being able to release things permanently. And so setting the in mind is going to be key to that long-term is knowing how do you, what do you want your future to look like in regards to and in connection with the things in the past that need to be healed? I think that's a powerful question. And I do like her use of questions in this guidebook. Um, she um, it seems to be focused on making you think these things through, and I quite like that. Now, above uh, here, up in here, we have two uh, interesting places. The one is called the expression here. This was repression, and this is expression. And this is a key to unlocking a potential direction. So this is kind of key for moving forward, and I like that we actually have somebody looking like they're you know, going off on this journey. The key is actually doing this, taking the time to actually do the work. But I am going to pull the thing up. I'm just saying what I like visually what we see there in that position that the key is it is time to take you know go on this journey uh, that may have already been gone on before uh, but that but I think healing is a, as we've talked about in other videos healing is a cycle healing is not something that occurs one time it's a process that is goes over and over again and brings you to different levels and now we're just trying to get to that level of wisdom the three of fire lets you know that now is also a good time to explore and experiment on a practical level uh, so this is, again, that idea of action, implementation, implementation, sorry, exploration. It's, it's doing it. It's fire. This, and that's one thing I like about this deck is that the fire suit is very much about doing. So it's instead of talking about conflict resolution, it's doing something about it. It's time to do something. Instead of planning and thinking and pulling energies together in the two of wands, it's now, okay, three is like doing. We're going to do something about this. This is time to get this is it is time to do something about this situation. And so that idea of action and transformation of the fire energy and the growth, because the number three is a number of growth. It is a movement. We are they're going to see some move. The key here is seeing some actual movement and doing some actual work and actually moving this the, the scenario forward. So I quite like that. 
Um, and then finally we have as a guide, I mean, that's a very powerful guide uh, because that's the Ten of Fire. And again, you know, I really like this, that we have this fire showing up here. Uh, we're recognizing the emotions with the water, uh, and but we're, uh, we're seeing the rest of the Minor Arcana as fire and action and movement and transformation. I think that's really powerful. And the Ten is the completion of fire. Uh, this is mastery of the situation. This is light work. It says mastery of both craft and self, taking command of the self and life. I love this. Um, it's wielding personal power. So I what I what comes to mind because we have all the chakras in balance is is the guide is actually that sense of completeness of this person's own self. And I think that's pretty powerful uh, because it talks about this as being a guide or energy that will strengthen you and work with any blockages. And here we have uh, the um, ten of wands with the chakras all opened without blockages. So bringing to bear the full force of your um, integrated self, that the mastered self, that is going to help kind of go back and resolve. I really like that. I think that's quite powerful. So how beautiful is that? I think that's a really strong uh, reading. I love the way that the cards talk to each other. Um, I'm going to pull just because, you know, I do have the messenger oracle. I'm just curious here. I'm just going to pull a, um, just as kind of... Um, you know, a message, a, mes a message from the universe. Because one can't help but to at least see if these two want to talk to each other. I, I like to peek at that. This one I didn't have a particular zing on, though, but here's the actual card. Have courage. So this is going to take some courage. You know, dealing with going back and dealing with past issues is always difficult. But look what you've got, your own strength and guidance here. Uh, I love that we have the King of Water here. I love that unconsciously you have that sense of self-confidence here. You, I think, already have the knowledge and the self-possession. We're just trying to take this a step further. So have courage because I think, you, I, you know, overwhelmingly, you have what you need to deal with this. It's just... There's just some work that needs to be done. So I think that's really beautiful to show up there. Uh, it makes me want to pull another one. Let's see what's at the bottom. You were born to create. How beautiful is that? Um, technically, I probably would be forced to draw another card because I like balance. Um, but I'm just going to leave it alone because that, to me, I think says what it needs to say. And that's a really beautiful uh, reading there to show up. Uh, with the gorgeous uh, Dreams of Gaia Tarot by Raven Phelan. And uh, it is a Blue Angel beautiful deck. She both wrote the book. I don't know if I said that before, but she did the art as well as wrote the book. Um, I'm taking my hats off to Raven Phelan. I really love the energy of this deck, and I am greatly looking forward to working with this, both for myself and with clients. I, I don't feel, sometimes I have decks that I feel like, you know, probably aren't decks I'd use with clients. That is not the case with this one. Uh, I would be, uh, I would have no issue working with this uh, personally and or with clients. I think it's going to read uh, absolutely gorgeous. So there we have it. <laughs>